Okay, so we're going to do the uh, extrude continued. And so we're going to open up the square part. And to find out what our dimensions are to check it, a couple things we can do. We can just double click the three dimensional shape. And it's going to show me that I made it 200 by 203. So that's actually incorrect. And we also have um, our depth on the Z axis here at 216.51. So this needs some work. We also have planes that are not centered. So this would actually be our top plane, our right plane, and then it is centered on the front plane. So I'm going to show you how to do all that stuff. So we can uh, click off of here by hitting escape on our keyboard. And I want to go over to the left side and find extrude one. If you click the arrow, here's your original 2D drawing. Section one is my 2D drawing. Section means two dimensional drawing. Right click that and go to the little yellow sphere that's called edit definition. And then go back to sketch view, and you're going to see your two-dimensional drawing. So we could correct our numbers. Let's go ahead and make this um, the correct number, 200 by 200. And I'm going to have you change a few things in this drawing so that I know you've done everything correctly. We're going to go ahead and make this 150 in width. So 150 and then enter. We're going to make the height 300. So we're going to edit it, and we're going to center it on the plane. So we're going to make this half of 300, which is 150. And then we're going to center it going the other way. And this number is going to be half of 150 or 75. And now we've got that crisscross going right through the middle. Now it wouldn't have to be there. I mean, we could make that any number we want if we wanted to use that plane for some purpose. And then I'm going to accept my two-dimensional drawing and now change the shape. Let's change the depth now. So if you hit the arrow and you right clicked on section one, it would take you back to the 2D drawing. Now we're going to practice changing the three dimensional depth. So we would right click on extrude one in this case and edit definition. And now you can see I'm editing the three dimensional depth. And I'm going to have you do 150 on the depth. And so now we've got basically a square that's elongated 150 by 150 by 300. We're also going to center it on that plane. Notice how if we go to um, our top view that this plane was selected and we extruded it in one direction. One option we have is to come up to the upper left pull down menu and choose how it gets extruded. We can have it centered on that drawing plane. So when I do that, half of the 150 goes this way or 75 and half of it goes that way, 75, and then we accept it. And so now we've got planes centered in the middle of the top, planes centered in the middle of the side or the front. And now we're going to add a feature to our extrude. So this is feature upon feature drawing that makes you have complicated parts. So we're going to go ahead and put a hole all the way down through the middle. And so we make a new extrude. And we're going to see extrude two happen over here. So extrude one was our square that has been basically extruded to that length. And now we're going to pick where we draw. So we're going to draw on the top surface and hit OK. Oh, I'm sorry. Now we're going to hit sketch view. And then you can see we have these two crisscrosses. We'll see if our circle snaps to the middle. It sort of does. It's, it's snapping to this plane, but not to this plane. So what we can do is we can hit our selection arrow, right click in the blank space. And this is a new tool. We're going to go to references. And we can say, I want to be able to snap to this plane as well. You could actually select all kinds of things as references. And that gives you the ability to snap to those things. And it lists them in our uh, reference dialog box up here. And then hit close. And now when we go to a circle and we draw it, it's going to snap to that center point right there. We're going to draw our circle, middle click our mouse, and change the diameter to 50. And that sets our diameter. And you can see if we orbit that we drew that circle on that top surface. When you hit OK, by default it's trying to add material. And so we could do that. Um, and let's go ahead and add... I'm going to change it from a hole. I said hole, but I'm going to actually make a little peg coming out of this. We're going to make this come out uh, 75. So I'm changing the depth of that and accepting that. 
and you see I've got a peg on that side. So I'm going to make like a little toy part. I want another peg on the other side, so we're going to learn a new feature. Notice how I'm highlighted on Extrude 2, and I can go to a feature at the top called Mirror, and I can mirror it across the plane that we used, and you see it's going to pop up over here. That only will work if that plane is centered to give you a symmetrical mirror of a feature that's over in our model tray. This is called your model tray on the left. We accept it. And then we could do some other things to this. We could round the edges so if it were a toy, a kid wouldn't uh, get cut on it. We can go to our rounding tool and we can pick how big our rounds will be. We can try six and you can see it might be just a little bit small. Let's go ahead and do 12. Let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. And then start clicking on edges. You can only round edges. So don't click any surfaces. You can see we're rounding those. We also can round these. Okay. And then we're going to accept that. And you can see it's rounded that very nicely. We also could round the peg so it goes in more easily to the other part of the toy. So we could do a round. It's already at 12. That might be okay. We'll see. Yeah, that's fine. All right, accept that, and there's your little part. Now, if you wanted to make additional features, you could put a hole in there. You do anything with this. There's just no limit of what we can do. Make sure you're going to save it. And uh, since we have a new part and it's a different name, we're going to go ahead and do a save as, save a copy. Because right now it's the cube part where it might be square and extrude. So we're going to do save a copy. We're going to pick where it goes. You know, it's in the Creo folder for me. And the new file name is going to be uh, Toy Peg. So we're going to rename it as Toy Peg and hit OK. Now, notice that it's not Toy Peg at the top with that part. And so we're going to close this part. And we're going to open up Toy Peg. If we were to continue working on it, we would have to open up the correct part, that copy that I saved already. So we should have toy peg in here. There it is. All right, and that's our part. And we have the correct file name at the top. So if you were to do anything to this, um, then you would be able to continue on. Let's go ahead and go to View, Appearances, and just pick a color and click the plane. Notice how this whole thing highlights when I go to the plane, or I can color individual surfaces. I find it easier just to do the whole thing and hit this OK at the top. And now you've got a red toy, and you can just file Save now because you're in the correct part. So now I want you to go to the snipping tool at the bottom, and you're going to click on New, and you're going to snip this part here but actually you know what I forgot I want you to do dimensions on here so you're going to do that control F that we talked about and you're going to give me those numbers, and then we're going to snip it. So now go to your snipping tool. And you're going to snip that part. You're going to save that PNG, and you're going to submit that on Canvas under Extrude Continued.